All right, so um, today we're going to talk about um, basically uh, Minion provisioning an SNMP within OpenNMS and uh, an alternate Minion daemon that I've created, um, that I've written in Go, uh, that I've called the uh, underling. So uh, from what you see in, my, uh, in front of my laptop here, I got these two little devices connected to a switch. Um, so those are a couple uh, Orange Pi 1s, um, very similar to the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, although you can actually buy these and they're not out of stock. Um, <laughs> so that said, um, here's the kind of network diagram that we'll be working with today. So we got those two guys connected to an unmanaged switch. Uh, my laptop is acting as the uh, upstream gateway here. Um, of course, we're behind a firewall and we'll be talking to an OpenMS instance that's sitting on, on AWS. Um, so the goal here is just to demonstrate how the minion works uh, behind a firewall. So there's no way for this OpenMS instance here to uh, actively connect or reach any of these devices behind here. So all the work that we'll be showing has been uh, done by these two devices. Um, so a bit about the hardware, you know, the Orange Pi 1s, uh, you got a 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex processor, only 512 megs of RAM, um, goes for about 10 bucks without the case, uh, and it's running Armbian um, based on Demi, Debian Jesse. Um, so <coughs> Uh, starting from OpenMS in the cloud, um, the only thing that we need to do that's special to allow this thing to talk to OpenMS is enable the stomp connector. So OpenMS ships with um, an ActiveMQ daemon embedded. So if you go ahead and edit the ActiveMQ config um, and you enable the stomp protocol here, that will allow these devices to reach out to it. So currently this is uh, you know just wide open, unencrypted. Uh, so that's, and you know, we got credentials flying over there. So that's something we're going to be working on in the near future, but for the purposes of this demo, um, that's fine. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, what I did was uh, basically rewrite parts of the minion in Go. Uh, so the reasoning behind that was so we can create a, um, a single binary um, executable that can be, you know, that can go onto these smaller devices and doesn't require all the baggage that Java normally brings along, right? Um, so here's a link to that project. And what we're going to do is um, we're just going to go ahead and build that from source on one of these devices here. So one of them is already fully set up. So we're going to go, uh, it's already set up on OB1. So we're going to go set it up on OB2 and just, you know, kind of run through the instructions. Um, so let's see here, just put that up. Maybe. Come on, hotkey's not working. Damn it. All right. It's KDE. <laughs> That'll work. All right, so here we go. We've got a console on this ARM box. Um, what we're going to do is just set up our Go path after we have Go set up. So I just um, only set that up as a, if I can type home Jesse Go. Um, once there, you can go get github.com tools go dip. That's what I use to manage the dependencies in this particular project. <coughs> do, do, do. These boxes aren't the quickest, as you see, but that's the kind of cool thing about them is that the fact that the minion bits can run on this small piece of really you know, slow and inexpensive hardware. All right, so that's it. Um, so now we're just going to throw... Um, well, copy-paste is not even working right now. Copy, paste, there. All right. So now we got GoDep in our path. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab the code um, to the actual underling project, JY underling. All right, so we're good. So now we could change over into the um, project directory here. Um, we see we got all the Go Go source in there, so we can do Go dep, Go build. That's just a wrapper around Go that will uh, make it work with all the dependencies. <coughs> all right, so we should have a binary in here now. Underling, uh, we see it's 3.9 megabytes, right, and that's. Uh, all completely self-contained. There's no other dependencies at all, uh, except for like libc, right? So 
uh, what I did is got a basic sample <laughs> configuration. Um, so I'm just going to copy that over. Uh, and then this is what kind of what it looks like by default for now. Uh, not all of these bits are used yet, um, but what you do is you set the location. Um, I'll set that to demo. The ID, that's not used yet. You point it back to your host. So uh, here's the URL for REST. And here's the URL for the ActiveMQ. Um, so you'll notice that port there is the same port that we had earlier in the Stomp connector above. So that's it. Change those two bits. It now knows how to talk to OpenMMS. And we just fire up the, um, the binary. All right. So we'll see that's connected. And we have basically both of these devices uh, connected to that instance in the cloud there now. Um, so let's see here. Now that both of those are there, what we can do is uh, access the carafe shell. And we got this new command here, SNMP walk. So um, what we could do is run SNMP walks at remote locations, right? So I'm going to say, go to location demo and walk um, the local host. And we'll walk this OID here, which should give us some IP addresses. There we go. So basically, we get a view of the network. And if we run this multiple times, um, yeah, see? So kind of what I want to illustrate here is uh, these hosts are local hosts is relative, right? So those two minions that are at the demo location are actually acting in a competing consumer model, right? So uh, we basically push tasks off, and whoever gets the task first is the one that's going to execute it. So we see that. Um, you know, the first and second time we ran it, uh, we saw 192.168.1.101. So that means that OB2 device got it. That's the one we just compiled the binary for. Uh, and then the third time we ran it, we got .1.100, which is OB1 that got it. Right. Um, so to if you don't want it to flap like that, you could basically just um, you know make sure you always use full uh, IP addresses instead of local host whenever you're scanning there. So again, we're going to walk a much larger tree here now and we get all the data back as expected. So this is just a diagnostic tool, but you know, kind of gives you an idea of what's, what's possible. Um, so yeah, using um, that SNMP client library, um, we've gone ahead and updated some of our services within uh, OpenNMS. Um, so one of them in particular is uh, provisioning. So uh, available in the 19 snapshots now, you can um, set the location field whenever you're provisioning nodes. Um, so you do, it's not required. Uh, if you don't set one, it'll just keep acting like it used to. Um, but if you do have one set, it's going to delegate uh, provisioning to minions at that location. Right? Um, so I already set this requisition up. Um, uh, I pointed to two devices using their actual IPs, and then uh, my laptop here. So you can actually synchronize. and scan those. Um, if we go to the node list, we see we got OB1, OB2. These were already provisioned before, but um, so you see it actually pulled in, you know, your Sysoptic ID, your location, and all that stuff is, uh, is pulled in here. Um, the thing, if we go to resource graphs, you know, we can see that it's actually pulling some data. Um, so yeah, that was set up right before here, so there's not much yet, but you can see that, you know, it's picking it up, creating the IRDs, everything is getting pulled in. Um, another cool thing that I added this week was support for uh, NRTG, right? So what we can do is click on that. We'll just change this interval to, right? So what we're actually doing is we're going to pull this live at a remote location, uh, which is pretty nice. So we don't see it change much here because, you know, the sys uptime only changes by 250 milliseconds every 250 milliseconds. So, but if we look at the raw values, we can see those steadily increasing here. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's see what else do I have. So that's the basic provisioning, SNMP data collection, uh, and anything else that uses SNMP can easily be modified to use this location-aware SNMP client, and everything will just um, work similar to what to how it used to. Re requests will be delegated to remote locations. Uh, so this week we've done some work on. Um, updating EN link D as well to use this client. So soon enough, uh, remote topology discovery will be possible too, right? So, uh, so that's that. Um, let's see what else I want to show. That's kind of it. Uh, we can look at what the uh, request and response objects look like. What's the, uh, what's the CPU utilization right now on, like, uh, on those boxes? Like uh, 
for probably like next to nothing. So we see requests just like coming in and out on both of them. Um, so that means they're kind of splitting up the load, um, but we can, you know, go in and want to check. Yeah. So SNMPD is, yeah. <laughs> so let's check on the other box then. Um, that was OB1. If we look at OB2. Yeah, I think the 10% uh, on the small arm box, so not much. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, right, so yeah, we can look at what the uh, request and response objects look like. So uh, the basic process is um, whenever you want to make an SNMP request, the library will go ahead and assemble this SNMP request object um, that will, uh, you know, associate to the proper location. So in there, it includes this agent field um, with all of the information required to speak to that agent, all the v3 properties or v2, et cetera, um, the read communities. Um, so a lot of these are just defaults that are included by here. Uh, if we do some work on minimizing the size of the message, we can actually get you know, rid of a lot of these. All that really matters is uh, you know, address and read community and version here. Uh, the rest are all defaults. Um, so aside from the agent config, we have the actual walks themselves. So this is saying, you know, go and walk this OID and let me know what the uh, what the results are. So given that request, uh, minions will generate a response that looks like this. Let's say a response um, for correlation ID zero. So that would allow the requester to match up the requests and responses for the walks and say, okay, under that OID, I found this instance. Here was the value. So uh, type, that's the ASN1 type, and the value is a base64 encoded um, string of bytes. Uh, that are used to, you know, decode whatever it is. All right, so that is the underlying uh, SNMP proxy provisioning data collection, you know, and we're all able to do this using the um, um, using the SNMP proxy. So, of course, this was an implementation that done in Go that's very simple. Uh, this is all supported as well with the Java implementation of the two. Cool, that's it. Any questions? No? All right. Good. Thanks, everyone. Pretty cool.